I think they expect one thing. They expect to meet this charming and and um, low key sweet guy from the Bay Area, uh, and they know nothing about his wealth, his um, his lack of social skills, <laughs> his uh, uh, the tattoo of my face on his chest, you know, and it's all jarring and shocking and a lot to process. Laird is somebody who has not the greatest social cues and he kind of says whatever he wants or the first thing that comes to mind and it's quite charming and quite refreshing to watch someone that has zero filter and it's always coming from a good place. And it's always really funny. <laughs> Stephanie and, and Ned have always been very close and and have told each other everything and and have a real special bond. So when Ned finds out that Stephanie has been keeping this huge secret, I mean she's in, she's fallen in love and has been with this person for almost a year now, it breaks his heart. Um, and it feels like you know, he feels in the dark and he feels confused and um, and like he's he's sort of he's trying everything he can to hold on to her and it's and it's making it that much worse. It's a clash of cultures. It's Michigan meets Silicon Valley. Dad meets boyfriend, polar opposites. Um, until you realize that they're both really um, honest and loving, generous men. They just sort of haven't found their common ground yet. There's so much going on in every scene. And Stephanie's main function, she's just trying to make sure everybody gets along. She's constantly putting out fires. And I, and it's tough because it's, it's, she is, generally speaking, the most intelligent one in the room. And she's just like watching these car crashes like right in front of her. Oh my God, how's, how do I, how do I handle this situation? I like feel like there's maybe eight of him. There, ha there has, right? There has to be, because I swear I, I'll hear he's in Switzerland, but then I'll be on set an hour later and it just doesn't add up. Like it's kind of remarkable. And the work never suffers. He's so great and so funny and so prepared. You know, I've never seen him unprepared. Yesterday we were um, we were talking about the scene, and I turned around and was like, "Oh, James, what are you doing? You're not in, you're not in this." And he was like, "Oh, I'm just here painting." And they had set up, they had blocked off a little pseudo studio for him to finish some of his paintings for the film. Yeah. You'll have to spot them. They're all over. Each, each room in the Fleming, in the, each room in the, um, in the Mayhew residence has a Franco original. Brian is so much fun to watch because he, he just looks at his, at the space around him and he always finds something funny, something different, something you don't expect. Um, it kind of makes me laugh thinking about the way he's playing, <laughs> playing Ned. John does this thing where it'll be like a 45 minute long take and you'll sort of come out of it and it'll be like, what just happened? Like you feel like you blacked out. It, 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 I've never, I've never done that. <laughs> they just keep going and keep going and they're really, it's, it's daunting and really fun at the same time. It's hard to work with Keegan, honestly. It's really hard to work with him. He's so funny, he's so talented. Uh, I can't, I can't, I can't keep a straight face. Like, oh, you expect that I can not laugh through that? I don't think so. I heard Brian the other day saying that he wishes Keegan was on every set. And I was like, I wish both of you were on every set. You're just the greatest guys. Ned and Laird have some difficulties throughout the film. Um, Ned doesn't love Laird, and it culminates to this one moment where they have a physical fight. 
a very physical fight. And Laird ends up on the top of a uh, a sculpture, this giant art piece of a moose in formaldehyde. And he falls into it and it all the formaldehyde covers the entire floor of the dining room and it was this crazy stunt and we only had one take and it, uh, it was like amazing. Richard Blaze cooks up this feast of mystery and um, one of the things that is served is California bear and you're supposed to wrap it up in paper and James went for it. He had to eat a many of paper California bear burritos. I stuck with the flowers, which by the way, were disgusting. I'm just gonna put it out there. I, I, I tried to be a trooper. Um, I wouldn't recommend, I wouldn't recommend choosing the flowers. Did you know that Dwayne Johnson was Tim Burton's second choice for the role of Willy Wonka in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which went to Johnny Depp? Do they seriously look alike according to Barton? Who do you prefer as an actor, Depp or The Rock? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to click here for more videos. Thanks for watching.